Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and it's time for episode number six of our Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness playthrough here on the channel. In the last episode, we came here to Agate Village because we have the Purified Chamber being worked on back in the Pokemon HQ lab, but it's not quite ready just yet, so our mother sent us here to uh, purify our Pokemon the old-fashioned way, which not too long ago we did see done back in our Pokemon Coliseum playthrough. So we are here to do that today, I think... We have to head down to the forest now and make our way through a couple of trainers. Let's take a look at the team as we are currently working with them. As always, let's go to the bottom of the list to show the older Pokemon first of all. Snapper the Totodile up first at level 23. He has the Torrent ability, of course. Moves our Water Gun, Dig, Ice Beam, and Dragon Claw. Next we have Dratini all the way back from the Safari Zone in Kanto. He is a pretty serious Pokemon as you can see. With uh, sitting at level 23 with the Shed Skin ability. And, okay, as regular viewer Robert did say, I was mentioning how Shed Skin cures all status conditions such as burn, poison, sleep, and paralysis. And I wasn't sure about freezing. And he says, you know the odds of Dratini actually surviving a hit that would freeze him are pretty slim, being a dragon type. Well, maybe. But what about Powder Snow from like a level 2 Smoochum? That could be a thing that could freeze him. But, yeah, I mean, admittedly... We're not likely going to see Shed Skin heal a freeze, but let's hope that doesn't even have to come into question. Anyway, he has Iron Tail, Dragon Rage, Thunder Wave, and Ice Beam. And first up for our Shadow Pokemon, we have the Poochiana that we caught back in Gadeon Port at level 10 right now. She has the Runaway ability. Her Heart Gauge is empty, so we're about to purify her very soon. And moves our Shadow Blitz, Shadow Hold, Poison Fang, and Howl. Next is Ladybug, also from Gadeon Port at level 10 with the Swarm ability. Still needs a little bit more for his Heart Gauge to drop down, but that's what these next few trainer battles are going to try to be about. We'll be leading him, well not leading him in battle, but we'll be bringing him into battle. Of course, battling is the best way to purify the Pokemon and lower the Heart Gauge. Moves our Shadow Blitz, Shadow Shed, Aerial Ace, and Supersonic. And last but not least, the first Shadow Capture that we made, our Teddy Ursa. She is a lax Pokemon, which, if I remember properly, increases physical defense, dropping special defense. I think that's what Skippy has as well, our Swampert. She has the pickup ability, her heart gauge is also emptied out nicely, and moves our Shadow Blitz, Shadow Mist, Lick, and Metal Claw. Are you holding anything? You're not holding anything. That is fine. Alright, so let us finally get back on track here. By back on track, I will say that, of course, if you notice, there was no episode of Pokemon Coliseum, sorry, Pokemon XD yesterday. In fact, there wasn't an episode of anything yesterday, so to speak. But, before I continue, ah, you must be that Chaz, the Chaz that Egon was talking about. I've heard that you battled to open the hearts of Shadow Pokemon. The relic is through this cave. Don't give up. All right, he's going to let us in. We're going to be able to do some battling. And this place is really bad for the lag on the computer. I can hear. This place is also bad. But all those waterfalls out there are just slowing things down. I'll help you purify your Shadow Pokemon by having a battle with you. Are you ready to get started? Yes. Okay, then let's get with it. So, there was no episode yesterday. This is basically following suit with the first week where I didn't have an episode on Monday, although this is supposed to be a Monday through Friday series. But it was Thanksgiving this past weekend here in Canada. Of course, I say here in Canada because I believe the States, the United States has their Thanksgiving November, I believe. We get ours in October. So first of all, let's choose our attack. Let's go with... Let's go Metal Claw to the Zigzagoon. Let's go for a Shadow Blitz into the Numble. I want to try to get the Reverse Mode activated as much as possible to get maximum purification. Anyway, so it was Thanksgiving, and admittedly, after you have a nice big meal, which we did on Sunday, you kind of just you lose your energy, you know, you're tired and stuff. So I didn't do any recording. What I did do, however, is something pretty cool. I finally put some effort into seeing if my computer can do live streaming. And I did that on Monday evening, Thanksgiving Monday evening, and it can. I have uh, the program now, I got the equipment to do some live streaming. I was seeing some internet lag, which means I might not be able to do live streaming for a very long time, but uh, it was, I think it might have just been because like it's raining outside right now. Sometimes when the weather is pretty bad, it does interfere with my internet signal. So that might have been what the problem was. I want to try to do weekly live streams now that I know the computer can handle it, and I might try to do trade off back and forth like one week we'll do TCG which we did this week and next week or this coming weekend on Sunday see if I can possibly do some Pokemon Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battling with you folks and it was a it was a small little live stream it was cool though I liked it like I'm not I look at some live streamers and they have 
hundreds of thousands of people watching them whenever they do it. I'm still a small channel, but I'm okay with that, you know? I like just uh, building up, I guess, from... I'm the kind of person that likes to feel like I've earned what I get. So, by taking my time and kind of letting things build on the channel naturally, I kind of like doing it that way. All right, Lick takes down the Nummel, I'm gonna say. Down it goes. Our first battle is done. We didn't get the heart gauge down very low, but I mean, why are you still going into reverse mode? Your heart gauge is empty. What was your name, Corpse or Gorps? Gorps. Yeah, that was something. What kind of name is Gorps? But you did help us with a little bit of purification. To open up the closed heart of a shadow Pokemon, entering it in battle is effective. That's why you should make shadow Pokemon battle whenever possible. I hope your shadow Pokemon get purified soon. Thank you. Can we fight you? Chaz, aren't you? I heard about you from Egan. Let's battle right away. Okay. Did I heal? I didn't heal. I'll be okay. Joel's. Oh, she's a super trainer. Does that mean anything? Probably not. That's a normal type. You ain't got no fairy types yet. So keep that in mind. What else was I going to talk about? Yeah, so the live stream that I did, I was doing... Uh, I basically updated one of the Pokemon TCG online decks that I have. I'm going to call you out of hyper mode. I'm going to Shadow Blitz... Let's Shadow Blitz the Corfish, because we'll go with the Metal Claw against Snubble. But, uh, so, one of my favorite decks to use in Pokemon TCG, not just online, but at the Heroes Beacon Pokemon League that I do my professoring at, is my Mega Beedrill. You've seen that on the channel before, and you'll see it again, because I've updated it with the new standard format rotation to support Pokemon of Sceptile. Wait, am I healed? No, I'm not. Okay, I guess Teddy Ursa just didn't take any damage. So... The uh, Mega Beedrill deck would rely, excuse me, Hiccup, would rely on Sceptile for the Nurturing Heal ability, which would uh, allow the attachment of extra energy per turn, because whenever I see a Pokemon TCG card that says causes paralysis, I look at what the side effect is. A lot of times, you get to discard a certain number of energy, or you get to flip a coin. There's a reverse mode. Excellent. But any time a uh, card says cause paralysis without any sort of real negative downfall to it. I really pay attention to that, because if you can paralyze the opposing Pokemon, lock them into... Man, that's some slowdown right there. But if you can lock them into being unable to do anything turn after turn after turn, like every single turn paralyze them, you're in a pretty good spot. They can't do anything, unless they have some sort of way to heal or retreat or stop retreat or they can switch out. So, uh, let's go Metal Claw to Snubble. We're going to call Lediba. Get that heart gauge lowered by a nice chunk. Not bad. So, the Mega Beedrill relied on Sceptile for adding extra grass energy. It takes two grass energy to use the attack. What I found is in the new Shining Legends, it's called Sub-Expansion, so to speak, we get a nice ability from Venusaur with... It's called Jungle Totem. Man, stop hardening. You're slowing down the game. But Jungle Totem says every grass energy attached, or sorry, every basic grass energy attached to your Pokemon provides the power of two grass energy. One energy onto the Mega Beedrill powers it up for the attack for the attack called the attack the attack called Hazard Stinger. That's what I'm trying to say. Hazard Stinger is very cool. Let's go for the Corpus again because that's the one that causes paralysis and four times poison while doing 40 damage. So I kind of like using the Venusaur. You discard all the energy from Mega Beedrill to use it, but all you gotta do next turn is attach a single Grass. The Venusaur's ability provides two grass energy, so your attack is powered up once again. Quit your hardening! It's not even doing anything. I think our Shadow Blitz is still doing just as much. You're wasting everyone's time. Literally, you're slowing things down. But, problem with the live stream, and I this was just a test basically to see if my computer could handle it, and if so, how good it was going to be, how effective, and technically speaking wise, if my computer could be okay with it. So, the thing is, Apparently, when you do live streaming on YouTube, there's a special little box you gotta check to save the live stream afterwards. I didn't know that, so it didn't save the live stream. Kind of works out okay, because I was saying during the recording, I don't know if I should count this as the official episode 100 for Pokemon TCG, because the reason I wanted to do live streaming, I wanted to make a big commemorative episode 100 for Pokemon TCG Online, because it's that 100th episode, the next one that goes up on the channel. So the idea initially was to have that as our 100th episode, the live stream, the very first live stream on the channel. 
but by forgetting to save it, or not knowing how to save it, I basically rendered the episode gone. A one-time, be there for the live video footage kind of thing, and uh, yeah, so it's gone. So I do have to stop hurting my Pokemon. I do have to record another episode of that Mega Beedrill deck, but I'm okay with that because it's a fun deck to use. Do we have any regular potions? Yeah, we do. We're going to heal you up, Teddy, or so. Why does it highlight Snapper? What is happening? There we go. Meaningless to use the item. It's not meaningless to use a potion. Come on. Now, we're hardly doing any damage. Now, I don't get this. The Corefish was using Harden. Well, there's critical hit. We can't even really gauge the damage. But it was using Harden, but it seemed like our Shadow Blitz wasn't affected. But the Growl attack seemed to be lowering our power from Shadow Blitz. Handed the loss. Is it like, does Shadow Blitz ignore the stat boost of the target and maybe only of the user? I don't understand shadow attacks. Wasn't that a good battle? I learned something from it too. Oh yes, you know how a shadow Pokemon sometimes begins behaving strangely in battle? Yep, reverse mode, which used to be hyper mode. If that happens, calling out to that shadow Pokemon is supposed to help. I know it. Well, well, let this old woman come to the aid of pitiful Pokemon. I thought you were going to call me a pitiful trainer. The Pokemon, you can say what you want about them. Actually, don't, they're my Pokemon. I wonder how our battle will turn out. I'm eager to find out. Go and I think with another trainer hiding behind you, that could be just enough to get the Lettyball ready for purification as well. Slugma's gonna be a bit of a scary concern because if it hurts our Lettyball, it's gonna hurt our Lettyball. Is there anything else I was going to mention? So, yeah, I want to start doing regular live streams this week here. I'm gonna be doing some sort of bulk recording. That's Shadow Blitz to Slugma. I know we might get burned. Wait. Who am I choosing? Teddy Ursa, there we go. I'm going to Metal Claw the Cacne. I'm going to Shadow Blitz the Club. There we go. But i got to do some bulk recording. I'm going to have company for about a week, starting tomorrow when you're watching this. And I want to make sure I have video footage ready to roll. So I've got to do a bunch of recording for Pokemon XD. i got to record that new Pokemon TCG. i got a news thing to do. Over the weekend, I should probably do another... Well, like I said, I might be able to record Sunday evening for a Sun and Moon Wi-Fi session. And that time, I'm going to see what I can do to actually remember to record... Ooh, that hurt. To record the live stream and save it. So we might want to go for a potion here. Since Slugma is the threat, I'll have Teddy Ursa toss the potion over to Lediba. We'll have Lediba go for another Shadow Blitz. Make sure we're not in uh, reverse mode. I was making sure... I didn't want to start the attack find out I'm taking extra damage from my own reverse mode, but we are good. Now, just don't ember me again, and we'll be old diddly K. Old diddly K? Why not? Let's put some Flanders-isms in there. Come on, ember the, the Teddy Ursa. Of course not. Gonna go for the Pokemon that is weak. Was that a critical hit last time, then? Or were we just that weak? I don't know. Metal Claw, Cacnea, Shadow Bliss, the Slug Bump. I've said this before. Despite the fact that grass has a lot of weaknesses, poison, bug, flying, ice, fire, it almost seems like, don't you think metal and steel should be super effective against grass because people chop down trees with axes, they use like lawnmowers to cut the grass. I don't want to add another weakness to grass type, but you would think, I would think, that metal and steel should be super effective on grass. I mean, I guess because they have so many weaknesses they don't need anymore. Oh dear, oh me, oh my. But, I don't know. It just seems like it would be something. Anyway, my, you were impressive. That Pokemon should soon open its heart to you. Oh yes, I should tell you this useful bit of information. I hear that if a Pokemon has a closed heart, it's good to keep it with you. Rather than keeping it in the PC storage system, you should keep it with you at all times. Will do, maybe, if I have enough space. Get ourselves a few burn heals. That's good in case that uh, Slugma did burn us up. At times, an ordinary old man, at others, a plain senior citizen. But my true identity, the legendary trainer, Egan beat me, but only him. I'm Kron. Now, now, for the sake of your shadow Pokemon, we shall have a hard battle. Bring it on! Simmer yourself down, man. Fun, old man, Kron. Like the battle. Let's go. And as far as Pokemon go, there's not much more to mention just yet. I, You've probably seen by now the footage of me capturing the Entei. I've tried a fourth Entei. I've only caught the one so far that fourth one I took on. Didn't manage to catch it, but I am still suffering what some people say is no longer an issue. The last ball glitch. 
So who's the big threat here? Let's go Abra. So, if you're not sure what the last ball glitch is, it is an issue, it's a problem in the game, where no matter what, the last ball that you throw... What? Okay, at least you didn't our, our target down the ladybug. The last ball you throw in a raid battle is destined to fail. Alright? And the worst thing is, it... Like, it's a half shake. Like, normally a ball shakes three times, you catch the Pokemon. But the last ball glitch, from my experience, my perspective, it shakes... Hang on, let's go for... Lick onto the Abra. And Shadow Blitz the horse. Anyways, <clears throat> that's just one knockout. Not done with our ladybug yet. But I messed up. I said I wasn't gonna heal mid-battle. Let's call that a mulligan. Who did I heal? Both the ladybug. Did I heal the Teddy or I think I did. I feel like I should add a couple of knockouts to them for that. We'll deal with that in a moment. Alright, let's go with Ice Beam on to... Actually, let's use Lick on the Horsey. We'll Ice Beam Trumish. See, this is what happens when I don't record in a while. I forget my own rules. I'm not supposed to heal the Pokemon mid-battle. I used two potions. I used two, didn't I? I'll have to go back and check the footage to be sure. And I will throw a couple knockouts on them. Punishment for my own stupidity, my own foolishness. But what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the last ball glitch. It's like, it always does a half shake, and the Pokemon breaks out and then flees, right? So, some people are saying that the last ball glitch has been fixed, but in my experience, it really hasn't. Because, here's the thing, if the last ball that I throw in a raid battle, if it would at least wobble more than half and then they break out then I would say okay it's just bad luck or if I would actually catch a Pokemon on the last ball I would say the glitch is clearly fixed but hot a hot battle that was but yeah I still have the last ball glitch and I've heard someone else say that they've seen other people that still seem to have that problem as well so it ain't fixed completely I'm just saying that it dismays me to see that shadow Pokemon have appeared again it's a sad world we live in Here's a little something that may hasten how quickly Shadow Pokemon open their hearts to you. Cologne case! I was wondering where we got that. We didn't get it from the person in the uh, daycare this time. It's a case to hold the sense for giving cologne massages to Pokemon. I'm told a scented cologne massage helps ease open the hearts of Pokemon. Rub down your Pokemon gently when you use that cologne case. Alright, so... Do we have any revives on hand? No, we don't. So... I will double check to make sure I'm going to do the proper amount of injury marks, but we're going to head back to heal up, and i got to mark a couple of knockouts now. I believe that would be two for the Ladybug, one for the Teddy Ursa because of the healing. And i got to keep in mind, potions are not to be used in battle in this playthrough. I don't know how I met, or I let that slip past my mind. You guys are probably shouting in the comments down below, You're healing! Stop healing! I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. If I was live streaming this, maybe I could, but I don't know if I'd ever want to live stream like a main series playthrough. Because like I want to live stream stuff that you guys can get involved with, basically. Alright, let's go to the party Pokemon. We gotta mark you with one. And Ladybug, you're taking two. Alright, I think that puts us back to where we should be as far as my accidental foolish healing. Let us go for purification. I don't think the Ladybug is ready just yet, but we're going to find out in just a moment as we pop back into the, let's call it the non-slowdown cave. I wonder how well the Relic Forest is going to look. Because here we have a nice, awesome frame rate. And it's too bad I can't seem to really get the, the frame rate to work normally in other parts. No, even here it's all lagged out. Come on. Chaz, welcome! It's Egan. Man, we got some slowdown here. There's too much graphical stuff going on here. Your shadow Pokemon should be ready to open its heart after the battles you've waged getting here. Now I shall be your opponent. 
And here's my partner, the one Pokemon that I caught as my first, and that has stayed with me ever since. Go, Pikachu! Off we go to our first battle in five years! Let's keep things tight! So that proves this isn't Ash Ketchum. He didn't catch Pikachu. He was given Pikachu. Which you can see in the upcoming Pokemon... Or is it Pikachu? I Choose You movie. Which I've heard kind of recreates the original story. I'm not sure. So the problem here, Pikachu is, of course, electric type. And we have a flying Pokemon on the field. We're going to lick the Pikachu. We're going to take a chance. Or are we... Try the supersonic. How do you have Thunderbolt? We got good special defense though. Good, you aim for the wrong Pokemon. That still hurt. Supersonic does connect. Pikachu is confused. We gotta remember, can't heal. And the reverse mode. So, can we paralyze? Electric types can still be paralyzed in Gen 3. Hardly any damage, that's fine. Yeah, static. Nope. Reverse mode hits us for one whopping HP. Alright, we're gonna switch out clearly. I could switch to our resistant Dratini, but let's let Poochiana come in, get a little bit more experience perhaps. As Ledibo, we gotta call you out of reverse mode. And hope that you don't get knocked out to a Thunderbolt, because come on Pikachu, you can be confused at least once in your life. Hit yourself. I say once in your life, meaning I really don't know what you've done for the rest of your life, but just don't hit me is what I'm trying to get at. Come on in, Dratini. I gotta get myself one of my injury sheets. I forgot all about that. Oh boy. Alright, alright. I think Dragon Rage will do the trick here. As Lediba, this is an aerial ace. I'd be surprised if this isn't the knockout. Goodbye, Pikachu. I ain't catching you next time. A little bit of experience for our dragon type. Egun, you're done. You're E-done. That's it. Oh, bravo! I say bravo! Thank you for destroying my Poochiena. But also thank you for not aiming at Lediba. My goodness, it was a white-hot experience, our battle. And to defeat my Pikachu, that takes real skill or level advantage. Pika Pika! Now, let's see how your shadow Pokemon is doing. Ah, this Pokemon is on the verge of opening its heart to you. You've done a good job looking after it. Now, you should use the power of the Relic Stone to finally open that Shadow Pokemon's heart completely. Can Lediba be purified now? It can! Excellent stuff. All three of our Pokemon can be purified. What do you say, Pikachu? Pika, pika! What do you say, Egun? Egun, Egun! Nope, you say something else. Ah, this Pokemon is on the verge of opening its heart. Yada, yada, yada. We already know what you're saying. Now you should use the Relic Stone. Yeah, I know. Alright, let's go up here and see if this stops lagging so much. There's a Pokemon that may open the door to its heart. Of course. Let's start with our, ooh, our oldest one that's holding an item now. What do you got for us, Teddy Ursa? Now we come to the hard part of, what do I nickname you? Oh man, the frame rate is terrible in this situation. I really don't know why it's this bad. I wonder if I should do all the purifications off camera then, if it's going to be this bad. We're down to 12 frames a second. Well, I mean, the important thing is, we've purified our first Pokemon. So, we gotta think of a nickname for this cute little Teddy Ursa. Once it finally gets purified, bear with me. I might have to actually speed this footage up in the future, because there is no way this looks presentable. So, how's your day, folks? This is gonna take forever. I can't even hear the music of what's happening. Just get me the confirmation box. Get me to the nickname part. Let's end this off. I, I just don't understand how this game is so much more graphics intensive than the first one. It's basically the same thing, isn't it? Unless they really improved the, uh, the scenery, the graphics in this version. So I believe we're going to get some possible level ups here. Teddy Ursa opens the door to its heart. Teddy Ursa regained the move. Return. I'm just going to speed through this part, okay? I'm speeding this footage up.
well, let's take a brief little break here and actually get back to the game. Well done! That Pokémon has finally returned to its former self. For the time being, we should return to my house. Thank you! We'll purify the rest of them off camera, I think, if it's going to be that laggy. This is the cause for celebration. You successfully purified your first Shadow Pokémon without incident. Still, one can't be too happy, not with the knowledge of Professor Crane's abduction. You see, he was a frequent visitor to Agate... Again, I don't know how to pronounce it. Up to several years ago, he was conducting extensive research into the Relic Stone, you see. He said that it was for completing an entirely new purifying system that his friend thought up, which I'll be using a lot if the Relic Stone itself is that laggy, because you can purify them in the chamber, as you'll see later on. I wonder where the kidnappers have made off of Professor Craig. It must be worrisome for you, too. About that abduction, dear, didn't you need to mention what Vander saw? Hmm. Oh, yes, that's right. I need to tell you about Vander. We have a friend by the name of Vander who lives on Mount Battle, which is a place for of training for trainers. Vander claims to have seen sinister characters out in the desert where few people dare to tread. Whereabouts might that be? Ooh, this is starting to look familiar from the first game. Sounds intriguing, yes? Mount Battle is to the northeast. Be sure to visit it. Someday I will. That being today. Later. Alright, and I guess I'm going to end it here because, man, that was a long bit of lag. So before this game decides to implode upon itself, I'm going to say thanks for watching today's episode. If you enjoyed it for whatever reason, despite the lag, feel free to drop a like down below, of course. And feel free to check out the link in the description to the full playlist if you want to get caught up on all the episodes thus far. And of course, share that playlist with a friend that might want to check out some Gen 3 retro-ish kind of playthroughs here of Pokemon as we continue checking out the Ore region five years later, kind of, from the first game of Pokemon Coliseum, which we finished just a couple weeks back. Of course, there's other stuff you can check out on the channel. During the outro, there's some links to some more videos, like Pokemon TCG Online, Pokemon Go, Pokemon Sun and Moon Wi-Fi Battles, all sorts of cool Pokemon stuff here on the channel. And you can also subscribe to the channel during the outro as well by clicking on that link as well. But we are done for today's episode, or at least the first of today's episodes. Second one coming up in a couple hours' time, so stay tuned for that. And until then, I am now signing off. Professor Chaz is out of here. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.